On the Sunday of the Fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Synod, we commemorate the victory of Orthodoxy over heretical and schismatic members, a title used by the Orthodox Study Bible, New Testament and Psalms, on page 506. The Holy Fathers anathematized Dioscorus and Eutychus and all monophysites from the body of Christ and articulated the Chalcedonian definition, which affirms that Christ is perfect God and perfect man. The two distinct natures were united on the one person of Christ, the person of the Logos, without confusion, without change, without division, and without separation. Without confusion and change excludes any notion of monophysitism, and without division and separation defends and immunizes against Nestorianism. On this particular Sunday, and in commemoration of the 630 Holy Fathers, the Church strategically chose the epistle reading from the last chapter of St. Paul's letter to Titus, verses 8 to 15, regarding heretical and schismatic members, again, a title used by the Orthodox Study Bible. And I will refer specifically to verse 9, which is correctly translated in King James from the Greek. And I quote, Ereticon anthropon, a man who is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. The word heretic has been softened by the New English translations due to political correctness, perhaps, and or ecumenistic friendships and dialogues. The word heretic sounds a bit harsh and medieval, so a new and softer term is mostly used. A man who is divisive or factious, or a man who loves to argue. However, the Greek cannot be changed, so the ecumenistic hierarchs preach and ask, Who is a heretic? The Monophysites, the Protestants, and all our non-denominational Christian brothers and sisters of the World Council of Churches? No, no, they're not heretics. They simply didn't accept this or that ecumenical synod. They are churches that did not accept the fourth or fifth or sixth ecumenical synod. Heretics are the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and perhaps the Scientologists, and the modern-day adherents of Arianism. This mindset is totally foreign and irreconcilable to that of our Holy Fathers throughout the Church history and contradicts the spirit of the Scriptures. Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and all adherents of Arianism who reject the doctrine of the Trinity and of the incarnation of the second person of the Holy Trinity are not at all Christians, since they don't believe in the doctrine of Christ. According to St. John the Evangelist, whoever denies the Son, whoever does not accept the Son as God incarnate, does not have the Father. So an atheist is not only he who does not believe in the existence of God, but he who does not accept the God-human person of Christ. St. John repeats again in his second universal epistle, anyone who runs ahead and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. 2 John 1, 9. The term heretic was always applied to Christians who adulterated and warped the faith once entrusted to the saints. The filioque, the primacy and infallibility of the popes, created grace, are heretical teachings that adulterate and warp the Orthodox faith. Iconoclasm, the elimination of all holy tradition, sola scriptura, the elimination of the holy mysteries, and especially of divine liturgy, are terrible heresies created by human reason, the same reason, which spawned the Reformation and divided Christianity into thousands of pieces in the West. As Orthodox, we respect and love all people, including our enemies. We will help feed and clothe 
any one of our needy neighbors, regardless of creed. We will be careful not to be divisive at work and in public, and we can use the word non-orthodox, if you will, in our missionary endeavors. St. Paul did precisely the same thing when he was teaching in Athens. He was very respectful to the Athenian idolaters. He called them God-fearing people, although his spirit was churning inside from all the demonic energy of the Athenian idols. There he was doing missionary work, but here he's doing pastoral work in this epistle that he writes to Titus. Here he instructs his co-workers and future bishops of the church. So there's a difference between missionary work and pastoral work. Pastoral work has to do with teaching our own, teaching our people, the Orthodox. So St. Paul, when he writes to Titus in this epistle, he instructs him and all his co-workers and future bishops of the church, a man who is a heretic after first and second admonition, let him be. Do not spend months and years to convince him differently. The weed of heresy is a disease. Elsewhere, St. Paul calls heresy gangrene that will overtake the entire body if it is not cut off quickly. Unfortunately, Papism, Protestantism, Monophysitism, Nestorianism are not some benign customs, but heretical teachings that impede our beloved neighbors from reaching their God-given potential. They rob them from the potential of theosis and holiness, which is the highest privilege for a created being, to become holy as God is holy. And holiness cannot be achieved without truth and without orthodoxia, true faith and true practice, or orthopraxia. And we close with a greeting of the Apostle of Truth and Love. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love.